Hello data lovers, so I hope you all are doing super amazing. Well, it's 2023 and if you remember, two years back I created one data engineering roadmap video on my channel and you guys just loved it and I even think that was something very very informative I created on my channel for the very first time. So in this two years of gap, I also learned a lot of new things in data engineering explored a lot of new tech stacks as well so i thought why not to create a newly freshly upgraded version of data engineering roadmap or basically you can say data engineering roadmap 2.0 and in this roadmap video i have included my personal learnings whole interview experiences which i given in last two years and with the help of that one i have created this really really extensive data engineering roadmap video once i will open it you will be like dude what is this this is so extensive but i can honestly tell you if you will follow this roadmap sincerely thoroughly and consistently then within few months you will be equipped with most demanding skill set of data engineering so watch this video till the very end to know the complete roadmap and share it as much as you can so that newcomers in the data engineering can also follow this crisp and very extensive roadmap of 2023 and as always if you feel this is really value adding for you then hit the like button and if you are new to the channel then hit the subscribe button and press the notification icon also after going through with this roadmap video try to rate yourself for all these listed skill set in the comment box so that i can know how much you have been into this data engineering journey so i will walk you through with every single section here and will elaborate as well so this roadmap video first of all i have created in a sequential way so first half of this roadmap is something which is the fundamental or you can say the building blocks or the base of your data engineering journey and the first half of this roadmap video is actually very much needed this is like across all the job description if you are applying in tier one companies or any good product based companies startup service based companies consulting firm this is going to be the common one so first starting with the programming languages and this one you can start with python scala and java and from my recommendation side python again being the language of the data if you are starting if you are new then definitely start with that one but in the data engineering space these are the three languages which are really popular moving on to the next section like if you are going ahead with the python then python has a very very rich support for all the data analysis related stuff and that is why it is very much popular so you should also look into the exploratory data analysis libraries in python like pandas numpy matplotlib now moving on to the next part this is the most often asked question as well how much programming is actually needed in data engineering space for interviews how much we need to code to answer this doubt this is the simplest answer i can give the dsa part is something which is needed easy easy medium till medium not more than that you do not need to be a pro competitive coder or something like that so do not invest that much amount of time in that direction if you love solving it keep on doing it it's pretty good but I'm just telling you from the interview point of view. So in this one, what all topics you should definitely cover? First of all, Python related questions you might get in the interview. So try to cover these mandatory data structures of Python like list, tuple, dictionary, order, dictionary, set. Then the generic data structures and algorithm related topics like array, string, searching, sorting and dynamic programming till basic or you can say easy to medium level. Now moving on to the next one which is like the core and this is the part of your day-to-day -day activity so most of the times we will be working on these servers like those kind of operating systems where we need to work on the command line right so you have to be really good at the uh, linux commands and writing the shell scripting because sometimes we need to automate some jobs or any kind of stuff so you need to know that part as well next part which is database management concepts so you should definitely start with the why section like why transactional databases why they came into the picture what is the actual need of them understanding their use cases then the core of it like asset properties transactions concurrency control er diagrams indexing data normalization integrity constraints and the very creamy layer of SQL, which will be the kickstart of it, like understanding of DDL, DML, DQL, DCL, very basic commands of the SQL part. 
moving on to the next one the transactional databases so in the industry these are the two things which are really popular mysql and postgres two very most popular transactional databases you can say so if you are starting with this one try to pick any of it next the bread and butter for all the data professionals and this is the section which will have even 40% of weightage in your interviews so based on my experiences this is something you definitely need to cover because as a data professional uh, your domain for sql is not limited to joins and group bys only or just a select operation insert delete so in our day to day activities sql we use it very extensively and not only the easy part like including medium and advanced part of sql for the data analysis so these all things you need to cover for sure all type of joins cross join inner join left right full outer join where clause and the order by clause group by and having clause case when statements which is sort of if else kind of thing in sql case when statement with group bys sub queries nested sub queries and these are some lookup related operations in not in any all exist not exist aggregations and date related functions very common right we use it very frequently then common table expressions like iterative common table expressions and recursive which is eventually the with clause and then super most important window functions so here like over clause partition by order by related syntax all the aggregation functions ranking related functions very very much important lead lag nth value and then frame clause like range between rows between which will help you to solve the queries which are related to cumulative sum running sum running average or weekly running sum these kind of cases now moving on to the next one which is no sql databases again super important part of the big data space so you can definitely look for these kind of no sql databases first try to understand it understand the basis based on the cap theorem and then pick any of the no sql database to start with like hbase cassandra mongodb elastic search now till this point we have covered the first half of the mandatory skill set for the data engineers so if you are a software engineering enthusiast and in 2023 you want to invest in your future then i would highly recommend to join zovian full stack development boot camp their alumni are working in top multinational it firms and have backed the package ranging from 6 lakhs to 40 lakhs per annum this would be a 36 week long boot camp where you will get 900 plus hour of content including seven practical courses including seven practical courses 15 assignments and three real world projects one on one mentorship will be provided for resume linkedin career guidance and unlimited mock interviews they have a industry approved curriculum which is designed by the top notch silicon valley engineers you can look at the curriculum where you will be taught the latest tool and tech frameworks which are highly highly demanded in the industry right now the mentors of zovian are actually leading industry experts and this is the full job guaranteed program where you can get hired by 200 plus hiring partners onboarded on zovian within the 12 months of your graduation and this program also includes 3 months of internship at zovian or any of their hiring partner so far thousands of learners have transformed their career with the help of zovian i have given a link in the video description their new boot camp is starting really soon also they have a no cost emi option as well hurry up and enroll in this program now going into the depth of big data itself so first you should start with the fundamentals the things you need to cover what is big data five v's of big data distributed computation distributed storage hadoop like this is the first framework which came into picture for the distributed computation and distributed storage so you do not need to deep dive into the programming part of hadoop right because we have lot more improved and advanced distributed computation engine but their base is definitely hadoop the methodology is definitely adopted from the hadoop so you need to know its working and architecture in depth every single segment of it like hdfs map reduce and resource management like yarn and then clusters and commodity hardwares file formats these are like csv json oac parquet avro types of data like structured semi structured unstructured moving on to the next one which is batch data processing framework so in big data mostly we have three segments like batch data processing near real time data processing and real time data processing 
so for batch data processing the framework you should definitely target and this is the mandatory skill set nowadays right this is the mandatory skill set for the data engineers apache spark so with respect to batch data processing these are the two segments you need to cover from the apache spark like spark core and spark sql now moving on to the next part which is related to real time data processing frameworks so for this one apache spark the spark structured streaming you need to focus and next one which is apache flink which is getting really really popular when it comes to create pure real time data streaming pipelines and since i have been using it personally for production level applications i know how much amazing this is so make sure for this sort of use case you must try this and you must explore it and lots of companies are asking it in their job descriptions moving on to next one no code framework under big data there are popular no code frameworks means where mostly you need to work on the configuration basis and the drag and drop kind of features to build your etl pipelines so for this one you can explore apache nifi apache flume and apache scoop now coming back to the another important part which is scheduling our workflows scheduling our jobs or the orchestration dependency management so for that one workflow managers like apache airflow asgaban apache airflow is something which is really demanding so you make sure you have a good good understanding of it now must know things for the ci cd pipeline continuous integration and continuous deployment so based on my personal experience so far at least in this last two years i have used this sections very very extensively right and i will definitely show you what is inside that one but mark my words if you have these things in your resume and in your skill set i mean you are definitely truly inside the data engineering space because when it comes to the modern software engineering or modern data pipeline development practices these things you will definitely encounter so github github action jenkins spinnaker docker kubernetes so that's why i have mentioned must know things for ci cd pipeline and this would be the expectation from the data engineer now the messaging queue part which would be needed to build the streaming pipelines and again my personal experience is apache kafka i've been using it very very extensively so you should also have a really good understanding of it deep dive it and build applications around it now data warehousing concept again a very very important part for the day to day activities plus interview experiences and most specifically if you have 3 plus years of experience then in your interviews this round would be super important so in this one uh, oltp versus olap normalized data versus denormalized data lake data warehouses data mart lake house what is fact table dimension table slowly changing dimension table their types star schema snowflake schema galaxy schema and real world use cases around the data warehousing this is how you will be getting your questions in the interviews so data warehousing concept next one data warehousing services like those frameworks which are really really demanding in the industry when it comes to the best data warehousing solution so apache hive is there as a open source a snowflake getting a lot of lot of popularity and you will even find the job profile specific to this one snowflake developer so this is something which you should definitely target in 2023 and when it comes to the data warehousing services with respect to the cloud aws redshift is definitely dominating at this moment so now coming back to the last but not the least and match made in heaven which is cloud services plus big data so i have created the three segments because at any given point of time you can start with any of the cloud component but if you look at the market if you look at the job description so in most of the companies you will find aws is there as their primary cloud platform as a beginner you can definitely start with any one which you feel feasible so i have listed down the important services which you need to target with respect to data engineering big data and data pipeline building for every cloud platform so for aws s3 lambda ec2 emr glue rds athena redshift sns sqs kinesis cloudwatch quicksight and dynamodb these all things you should 
know if you are starting with AWS. Coming to the Azure part, here Azure Blob Storage, Azure Functions, Virtual Machines, HD Insight, Azure Data Factory which has gained a lot of popularity I must say. So if you are starting with Azure, make sure you have a very very strong knowledge of Azure Data Factory. Azure Relational Databases, Data Lake Analytics, Azure Synapse, Notification Hub, Service Bus, Stream Analytics, Application Insight, Power BI, Document DB. So that was about the Azure coming back to the GCP. So Cloud Storage, Cloud Functions, Compute Engine, Data Flow, Data Proc, Cloud SQL, BigQuery, popular service from the GCP side when it comes to the big data. Cloud PubSub, Stack Driver Monitoring, Geonomics and Data Store. So that was about the cloud services and that was even the end of our data engineering roadmap 2023. As I mentioned in the beginning, when you will open this roadmap video, this will look super extensive, but that is the beauty of this roadmap. So I hope this would be super, super helpful for everyone who is starting with data engineering or who is in the data engineering but is still lacking in the most demanding skill set so you should definitely follow this roadmap and again if you feel that this roadmap video is going to help you a lot then please drop a like and don't forget to put your ratings for each of the skill set in the comment section so i hope you guys would have enjoyed this video and i will see you guys in the next week with something amazing in the data engineering space till then just keep exploring data so before starting the next segment of our data engineering roadmap i want to talk about something really important